hours of the night or the 12 hours of the underworld. Mm. Remember, they divide into 12 hours or 12 gates or 12 zones. Mm. They are the dwellers of the 12 hours, the 12th hour, and they are the opener of the way for the sun to rise. That's why they are on the top of the temple over there. Of course, this is one of the places where guides are not allowed to explain inside, so I brought a few photos for you to show you some of the scenes you are going to see inside the temple. By the way, the other temple is dedicated to Nefertari, much smaller than this one, and over there we have four statues, six statues for Ramesses II and Nefertari. In spite of the, the other temple was dedicated to his wife, but he had to be there. Remember, I told you he had a big ego, this guy. So, when you enter this temple, on the rear wall of the entrance, you will see the figure of Ramses II on one side worshipping God Ra Harakti, on the other side worshipping God Amon Ra, and below them there is a row of his, some of his sons and daughters over there. Then you will see some interesting photos in this temple. For example, actually, this is how the, come to this side. This is how the entrance is going to look like. When you enter, you will find a corridor in the middle and eight Ozirite pillars for Ramesses II. The Ozirite pillars is like God Osiris in that position. So that's what you are going to see. On the top, on the ceiling, you'll see the vulture repeated many times. The vulture is the protector of the south. So, and that's how the statues look exactly. Ramesses II in the form of Osiris. On the walls behind, on right hand side and left hand side, you will see some scenes for Ramses II in his battles. Remember I told you before that violent scenes shouldn't be inside the temple, but we have seen the temple of Etru and we have seen killing scenes because it's concerning defeating the, the evil mm -hmm. or trying to kill evil represented in the hippo. But here adds a unique design for the temple. No pylons outside to put the violent scenes or the military scenes, so he had to place them inside the temple. So you're going to see some military scenes and war scenes inside the temple. For example, right here, Ramesh II on his chariot, some of his sons on a smaller chariot. Of course, the king should be represented bigger than anyone else. And they are attacking a citadel over there, and this citadel is above a big hill, and some people are falling down. Ramesh II here is holding two bows and two arrows. So they are showing the king as a mighty warrior, as a great fighter, using his bow and arrow like a machine gun. Quickly, very fast, killing here and killing there. So right here, after the battle, Ramses II, in his victorious procession, you can see that he is on his military chariot. The horse is moving slowly, trotting. And the lion pit of Ramses II is running next to the military chariot of Ramses II, and in the front should be some of the war captives. Right here, remember the battle of Kadesh with the Hittites? It's also represented on the right wall. You see Ramses II on his throne in the military camp, and the soldiers around Ramses II are training. Right here, you see. Ramesses II was supposed to be standing before the triade of Luxor, Amon Ra, Mut, and Khonsu. And here is before Amon Min, the fertility form of God Amon Ra, with the erected phallus, and that's Hathor. And here is Ramesses II representing himself as part of the triad. So Ramesses II is worshipping himself in a way, in a hidden way. See here Ramesses II, represented again twice as a high priest or the high priest and as a king in the procession of God Amon Ra. The priests are carrying the sacred part of the god which is identified with two ram heads on both sides. Here you can see on some of the pillars of, Ram, of this temple, Ramesses II represented receiving blessings from different gods and deities. And here he is burning incense before the procession of God Amon Ra. This is the sanctuary, this is the Holy of the Holies. These are the four statues for the gods carved in the Holy of the Holies. And they are God Ra Harakti, the god of the sunrise, Amon Ra, the king of all gods, God Betah, the main god of Memphis, the protector of art and artists, one of the creators, and the god of darkness. 
Number four is Ramesses II himself as a god, seated among us, the major gods of ancient Egypt. So he is represented in the Holy of the Holies as a god himself. Actually, when this, as I said, this temple was designed in a way to let the sun in twice every year to cover the statue of the king. The sun touched only the three statues on the right hand side, which were the statues of God Ra Harakhti, the statue of Ramesses II, and the statue of God Amun Ra. But the sun never ever touched the statue of God Batah. Why is that? God Batah is the god of darkness. He will never touch the sun. He cannot touch the sun. So that's mainly the temple. Of course, much more scenes inside. We can get all the photos here. But here you can see we're going to start with the temple on the other side. Inside, as this temple is dedicated for Nefertari, the queen of Ramesses II, identifying her as, as goddess Hathor, the cow herd goddess. So you're going to see Hathoric pillars. And the Hathoric pillars, usually we have the head of Hathor. And the head of Hathor, or God, goddess Hathor, the cow-headed goddess, either was represented as a complete cow, or a lady with the head of a cow, or a regular lady with two horns of a cow, or a lady with two ears of a cow, and the wig of goddess Hathor. That's why we call this Hathoric column, because the capital of this column has Hathoric uh, figure on the top of it. And that's a general scene for the temple over there. Of course, it will be much smaller than this one. And these are the Hathoric columns, the column that has the face of Geras Hathor on them. Many deities, and Ramesses II has a relationship with many deities over there. Also, you see Queen Nefertari, the beloved queen of Ramesses II. She is holding the sistrum of Hathor, or the rattle of Hathor, the sound that Hathor loves. And this is one of the offerings that could be made to Goddess Hathor through the king or the queen. Here you can see Isis and Hathor, both are adoring the queen between them, touching the queen, blessing the queen, loving the queen, Queen of Eteri, of course, and these are two of the most important gods of ancient Egypt. Again, this is Isis or Isis and this is Hathor. Actually, the figure, you see, they look very smart, they look very nice, but how do we know that this is Isis and this is Hathor? How do we know? How can we tell? the same shape, the, two, the same two horns of a cow, the solar disc, the cobra and everything. How would we identify them? No, it, usually a god or a goddess was either represent, uh, identified either by a special crown on his head or a special headdress or if not, they put his name in front of him. The throne, this is Isis and the square with Horus in it, this is Hathor or Hothar, the house of Horus. Here, you can see Ramesses II, behind him, his wife, Queen Nefertari, they are holding lotus flower, bunch of lotus flower, offering them to goddess Hathor, seated before them, and at the same time, Nefertari is holding the sistrum or the rattle of goddess Hathor. Also, this is a very important and very interesting scene. You are going to see Ramesses II being coronated this time by two different gods. Who are they? This is God Set, right? And this is Horus. Wow, how come? The two guys who have been fighting for the throne, the two guys who hate each other, they just forgot everything about that and they came to coronate who? Ramses II. That's how he shows how important he is. These two important gods, they were fighting for the throne. They were fighting for this crown. When they saw Ramses II, okay, let's forget about the fight. He is more important. Give him the crown, coronate him as the king. That's what this scene is telling us. This is the sanctuary right here. Unfortunately, the statue of the goddess is destroyed, but it was supposed to represent Hathor as a cow coming out of the mountain. She, one of her names was the lady of the mountain or the mistress of the mountain. And you can still see her up there represented as a cow on a boat in the Delta Marshes. And this is Nefertari. That's her name in her cartouche. She is offering her few papyrus plants. Well, I guess that's it. So I'm gonna be entering the temple of Ramesses the second, the great uh, Abel symbol, way deep south into Nubia territory. Mm. Mm.
different to the newer temples at Edfu and Philae, the, the cut is slightly different. Ramesses the Great smiting the enemies. Damn boy. Trampling the enemies. And these hooves. <laughs> That's what we gotta do. We gotta trample them, man. We ain't taking no prisoners. Oh. God damn. Looking all frightened. My revolutionary cam is rolling, player. Player. Those who think big will be big. If you think small, you'll always be small. And I hope the camera's catching all the color. Cause the color is very vivid. Ah. These statues, you can see the height. Engage them with the little small humans and see how big these statues are. And this is just the inner temple. Very difficult to gauge height unless humans are involved. So I hope you're catching this. Oh. We are back from Aswan and we're now in New Cairo, where we started. And we leave back for New York City in the United States of America tomorrow morning. And I'll try to wrap up everything with some questions and some answers from some of our brothers and sisters on the tour. This is a view from off the balcony at the Sheraton Hotel at the Sheraton Hotel in New Cairo, Egypt. Reporting live on Revolutionary Cam in Cairo International Airport on our way back to the United Snakes of America. Introduce yourself to the people, my sister. Melody Jackson from Washington, D.C. Right there. Uh, how many journeys have you made to Africa? Three. Beautiful. Three including this one. Plus this one, four. This one's four. What other places did you go to in Africa, other than Egypt? Cameroon, Douala, and Dakar. That's beautiful. How do you feel about the Arabian and European domination in Egypt? I'm still gathering information, accurate information. Okay. What is the biggest thing that stood out? The Nubian influence in Egypt. 
Who is your favorite pharaoh? Um, it would have to be um, the one who was the female who reigned when her husband died. She was the pharaoh for a few, uh, a, a short while. Uh, my brothers and sisters, we're gonna we're gonna research that one because I don't know myself. We'll get a name on that one. What part of the Nile Valley journey did you enjoy the most? Cairo. Like it. Egypt. My favorite was the cruise. When are you making your next journey back to Africa? If in fact um, I can see Alexandria or the Sinai. So next year? Uh, I'm not sure next year, but as soon as a trip comes up that would avail the Sinai or Alexandria too. All right, thank you, my sister. You're welcome. My brother, introduce yourself to the people. Uh, my name is Neil Calder. I live in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, originally from New York. Um, I'll be happy to. Where'd you get this from? Had a great time here in Kemet. How many journeys have you made to Africa? This is my first time on the continent. It's the first time in Egypt. All right. How do you feel about the Arabian and European domination of Egypt? Wow. Uh, we have to free uh, ancient Egyptian history from the interlopers in this country. And uh, our coming here is part of that process. Because when we go back home, all right, that's beautiful. What What is the biggest thing that stood out? Um, was even despite all the centuries of uh, foreign invasion and occupation, the, the African roots, the African presence, the present population is still undeniable from Cairo all the way to Aspen. All right, uh, who's your favorite pharaoh? Probably, um, I guess, hmm, Amoza and Kamoza who uh, founded the new kingdom and kicked out the uh, Exos. All right, cool. What part of the journey did you enjoy the most? Mm, it was all great. Uh, I think um, Ipeti Sut or Karnak was probably a highlight. And that was some of the my, my two. I keep on. I keep on telling everyone my favorite was uh, the journey just on the Nile itself, mm. on the ship. That was awesome as well. When are you making your next uh, journey back to Africa? I uh, don't know yet, but um, I definitely want to come back here. And I want to see some other places like Senegal, maybe Nigeria, and Ghana, things like that. So I'll be coming back. All right, Brother Neil, thank you. Thank you. My sister, introduce yourself to the people. Hi, my name is Tamara Holt. New York, by way of Maryland. Alright, uh, how many journeys have you made to Africa? This is my first trip to Africa, and I feel right at home. Man, Last you asked me about favorite, a good book on Egypt, man. This turned out to be very good. Alright, what made you finally come? Great. I've always wanted all to come the to Africa, we uh, and a lot of other places especially too. Egypt, but not uh, just Egypt. There are lots of other places I'd like to go to in Africa. In fact, much? every country. I don't know, man. This and, is, uh, um, the thing. I feel completely at home. It's a beautiful, right. beautiful place. You can't go back out. How do you feel about the Arabian and European sure domination of Egypt? Back to the security again, though. Well, I think it's just as unfortunate and as unjust as uh, <coughs> European domination all over the world. What is the biggest thing that stood out? The temples. Uh, they're incredibly beautiful, even thousands of years old and faded. It's uh, hard to imagine how beautiful they were when they were new. Right, who's your favorite pharaoh? Ramses the second. <laughs> what part of the journey did you enjoy the most? I keep telling everyone my favorite was just a, journey, a cruise down the Nile itself for me. Oh, yeah, just, that was, that was beautiful. Everyone should take a cruise down the Nile.
Or when are you making next journey back to Africa? Hopefully next year. Right. If not next year, though, definitely the next one. All right, thank you, my Sometimes sister. You said hello, thank man. you. My sister, introduce yourself to the people. I'm Althea. Thank you very much. Where are you from? Right. How many journeys have you made to Africa? Wow, that's beautiful. So how long have you been traveling to Africa? Um, for since 91. How do you feel about the European and Arabian domination of Egypt? Well, I, I think it's, it's terrible. It's, it's uh, very unfortunate for uh, What is the biggest thing that stood out? The biggest thing that stood out? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just anything, any, anything you have seen, uh, monuments in the temples, um, information. Probably the pyramids. The pyramids. The, the, the architectural uh, capabilities of the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptian religious. Okay. Who's your favorite pharaoh? Francis II. Alright. Who, who was your hero growing up before you came to Africa and doing the Africa journeys? Oh, I don't have any oh, like mine is Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X. Mine is Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X. Yeah, me. Oh, you said yours? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say because have so many, you know, so many African Americans and Africans worldwide that have done a lot for African people and for civilization here. So I, I really can't say that there are so right. many. Right, that's cool, that's beautiful. What part of the journey did you enjoy the most? So if you go to one, All right. When are you making your next journey back to Africa? All right, my sister, where are you trying to go to next year? A part of Africa? Well, it, um, where I would really like to go is I'd like to go to Mali. I really want to go to Mali, and I uh, I really want to go to Zimbabwe. Those are the two places that I really like to go to. Yes. Oh. I'm not sure. Oh. It just depends. All right, thank you, my sister. Thank you, thank you, my sister. All right, my brother, introduce yourself to the people. Hello, Tim. My name is Glenn Kirkland. I'm from uh, Washington, D.C. area. What you do in Washington? I'm the count. Beautiful. How many journeys have you made to Africa? This is my first one. Quite lightning, and I, I really enjoyed it. I've gone through the full range of emotions here from happiness to sadness to anger to just plain wanting to be by myself to wanting to be with everybody. It was really, it was, I, I get every emotion, it's really strange. All right, what, made you finally come, what made you finally come here? Money. Uh, I've been trying to get here since actually the early 90s. I'm finally in a position to be able to come financially. How do you feel about the Arabian and European domination of Egypt? It, it's depressing, um, but you know, it's no different than what's going on anywhere else in the world where black and or African people are dominated by, you know, uh, white people. Um, it, it's too rare. We, we're dominated mentally, you know, under a thing called conceptual incarceration, and this is a worldwide thing. Um, what we have to do is come from under this domination mentally first, then we can act to free ourselves uh, physically. What is the biggest thing that stood out? The pyramids. I have always been fascinated, especially um, the step pyramid that was uh, created or conceived of by Imhotep. What is the biggest problem with our people? Unity. Um, I, I, if we could unify, we wouldn't even need everybody, but if we could get even 10% of our folks to unify around an economic base 
um, um, or educational system. We could work one just in unity. Uh, who's your favorite pharaoh? Um, Jehudi Mesh, commonly known as Tuckmosis the Third. Um, this man was uh, the first uh, African and first person actually to conquer most of the known world. And he did that not because he was mean or evil, but to keep those other countries that were trying to infringe on Egypt or Kemet away from them. And in doing it, it was a benign rule that he had, whereas he brought culture to them and he helped civilize these other people. And who's your hero? Actually, um, it's two. Uh, Harriet Tubman for freeing so many Africans, I believe over 300, um, and risking her life and or freedom to do it. And a sister, a little known sister named Mary Turner, who I'd like to speak about for a second, who um, her husband was, was uh, unjustly, and I believe it was in Georgia, was unjustly in prison and was about to be lynched. The sister was pregnant and she went down and, uh, to get her husband out. Endless demons, um, they are. Um, I'm sorry. Those demons, um, they actually lynched her, and cut the baby out of her stomach, smashed the child. And that's truly a shoe of mine. Um, that's, that's real sad. Uh, what part of the journey did you enjoy the most? Um, the boat ride. I thought the boat ride was, was, was really hit. Ride the Nile was really hit. I, mean, I enjoy sailing the Nile. Uh, what is your religion? Um, it's none of the uh, none of the so-called world uh, uh, major Western religions. Uh, I, I believe I'm spiritual. Uh, I pray by trying to help people. I pray by talking to God and by meditating. But I, I don't belong to any organized religion. I like that. It's kind of the same thing I'm, I'm feeling right now. Um, when are you making your next journey back to Africa? I don't know, brother. It's when I get the cash. All right, cool, well, we'll see you around in the future. Thank you, brother. My sister, introduce yourself to the people. Well, first of all, I'm Betty J. Payne. Um, retired I'm 40 years from the educational field uh, as a school counselor for like 30 years. A teacher of mathematics for six years. Um, became very conscious minded in the early 60s, even more as I grew in age. And at this point in my life, I've just been so privileged to uh, sit at the feet of our brothers who are doing outstanding research, uh, the elders, even those who are younger than me, uh, that is just sharing all their knowledge. So pleased and privileged to just be a part of all of this, and especially this tour, because it includes the young, the elders, and all in between. And as I grow, I feel no better place to begin my growing than here. And I just love everybody. I feel so close to them. They're just family. And we've only been together eight days or seven days. No matter how many days, we will forever be a part of one another. Thank you, my young brother. That's Good beautiful. I got, a, I got a few more questions. Okay. How many journeys have you made to Africa? This is my very first one. Uh, made, to many more to go. What made you finally come here? Yeah. Pardon me? What made you finally come here? Um, the opportunity uh, after attending Brother Rashidi's seminars in Columbus for about six times. Uh, at the last moment, I just made up my mind, I got to go, despite all this. is just the beginning, as I said to many. really wanted to go to Ghana first, but I think coming here to Egypt where civilization began is where I should begin my journey. My next step is to Ghana. All right. How do you feel about the Arabian and European domination of Egypt? Um, I feel that it is ours now that I know it. I don't have a really a feeling because being here and seeing what I did, it doesn't matter how they feel, what they think. I know that our roots and everyone's roots began here. So it's okay. Uh, what is the biggest thing that stood out? Uh, the biggest thing that stood out to me was the opportunity to go actually into the tombs and feel the spirits there, to lead my thoughts and to know that I brought thoughts and feelings and spirits with me. What is your religion? 
At this time, uh, I claim no religion, but I have practiced Catholicism all of my life. And about four months ago, I just could not hold on to it. I might explore other religions, but I think I just want to be a spiritual being. Uh, who's your favorite pharaoh? My favorite who? Pharaoh. My favorite pharaoh? Yeah, pharaoh. Um, at this time, uh, I don't think I have one. I haven't done enough research. I've got that spirit of who would be my favorite at this time. Alright, that's cool. Uh, who's your hero? Uh, my hero would have to be my closest ancestors that were my father and mother who are no longer with me. Alright. What part did you enjoy the most as far as the journey? The part I enjoyed the most was connecting with the brothers and sisters who made this journey with me. Yeah. All right. When are you making your next journey back to Africa? Uh, probably as soon as uh, Shady does another group here. Or I may join one of the other groups. But it'll be soon. Within a year, I'm sure. All right, thank you, my sister. You're welcome. Keep the good work up, young brother. We need you to carry on. Thank you. My sister, introduce yourself to the people. I'm Gloria Jones from Los Angeles. I'm a formal educator from Los Angeles Unified School District. How much journeys have you made to Africa? About five. About five? What made you finally come here? I've uh, heard so much about Egypt. I've written, um, I've read quite a bit about Egypt, and this was on on my list um, for my travel for one of my travels after retiring. How do you feel about the European and Arabian domination of Egypt? Well, I feel that it's um, atrocious, but then it's happening all over the world, even in the United States. Uh, the domination of uh, the white over um, African Americans and other races. Uh, what is your religion? Um, religion. <laughs> Excuse me, religious science. What is the biggest thing that stood out? And that was another reason I wanted to come to Egypt. Um, I heard so much about the pyramids, and to see and view the architecture um, of the pyramids, and to just uh, imagine uh, how intelligent um, the Egyptian who constructed the um, pyramids, the materia, and how they were able to get um, the materia in place. Yeah. Who's your favorite pharaoh? Uh, Ramsey II, I believe. Uh, it seems that um, he was very intelligent. Um, he was able to manipulate people and things. And just uh, the demeanor, his demeanor. What is the biggest problem with our people? Um, during the uh, olden days, people gave their lives uh, just to help others, um, and it seems to vanish, disappear. Um, just the idea of helping others less fortunate than you, and um, uniting as a group. Uh, who's your hero? Mandela. Um, to uh, steward what he did. Um, he could have gotten that person long before he did had he given up certain rights, which he refused to, to do. So he really stands out in my mind. And also the mother of civil rights leader. I, I can't recall her name right now. Uh, Montgomery started the, the block out in Montgomery because she refused to give up her seat to Caucasian men. Okay. And this is how the whole thing got started for the rights of others. Okay. What part of the what part of the journey did you enjoy the most? The promises you grew in the DC. The view they actually view the pyramids. The temples were excited as well, but the, the most important, I think, 
the very important, uh, the most fun was the, the pyramid. All right, when are you making your next journey back to Africa? Uh, this year, actually, in um, July, we live in South Africa. All right, that's beautiful, my sister. I'm also going to South Africa in July, so maybe I'll see you around. Oh, really? Honey. All right, uh, I'll be in Johannesburg and Cape Town for a week. Oh, really? July 25th oh, we're to go, August we're 2nd. We're going to go to, uh, what is it, Cape Town and Johannesburg, and uh, what's the other town? I can't recall, but it's South Africa. So we may come up here. Okay, that would be fun. All right, look forward to seeing you around again. Oh, too. Same here. Hotel. Okay. Uh -huh. Bye. My brother, introduce yourself to the people. What's up? I'm uh, Sean Allen. I'm from Washington, D.C. All right, uh, how many journeys have you made to Africa? I've made two journeys to Africa. This is my right. second day. Where else did you go? I went to uh, Nigeria, Ghana, Togo, and through Benin. Oh, that's beautiful. What do you do in Washington, D.C.? What do I do? Yeah. I'm an electrical engineer. What made you finally come here? Uh, I do not know. I was compelled to. What is your religion? Uh, Christian, Muslim, Jew. How do you feel about the Arabian and European domination of Egypt? It will end. It will end. All right. Are you willing to shed blood to get things back to the way they are? I'm willing to do whatever. All right. If I can find some warriors. All right. Who, who's holding the camera? I'm with you. Uh, <laughs> what is the biggest thing that stood out? I'm home. All right. Who's your favorite pharaoh? I have, I have no favorite. All right. Who's your hero? Heru is the hero. Your hero is Heru? Heru is the hero. That's all I can say. Your hero? I don't understand. All I can no, so what is your hero? Like mine is Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X. People who have, who have inspired me spiritually. My, my mom. Um, what part of your journey did you enjoy the most? Um, as, uh, as well. When are you making your next journey back to Africa? As soon as I can. All right, thank you, brother. Thank, thank you, brother. My brother, introduce yourself to the people. My person is Malik. Where are you from? Um, Say, New Jersey. What do you do in upstate New Jersey? Uh, work. Social work. Social right. work. How many journeys have you made to Africa? This is my third one. Where else have you been? I've been to Benin. I've been to Morocco. I've been to... Senegal, and I've been to Tunis, Tunisia. All right, what made you finally come here? Well, I've always been interested in the pyramids, ancient Tumic culture. Uh, I've always been interested in the Egyptians. How do you feel about the Arabian and European domination of Egypt? Well, it put me a lot in the mind of uh, Europeans who went to Australia and did what they did to with the Aborigines. Uh, hopefully, in time, these situations can be corrected. Um, and that's probably the reason why I guess we're here also. Just to address some of those uh, disparities. What is the biggest contribution to the revolution? Excuse me? What is your biggest contribution to this new movement? Well, like what, like what uh, as, Brother as Rashidi is doing right now. As, as, as an individual, I think the biggest contribution for any one of us can just be to grow, to evolve, to always be open to information, to always be willing to learn, to always be able to spiritually climb the tree. Right. Develop and serve as examples to people that we encounter coming to contact with. Mm. What is the biggest thing that stood out? Uh, Abu Simbel, Karnak, very, very impressive temples. Tour guy was excellent while we. Uh, 
Alright, um, are you willing to shed blood to get things back to the way they are? I didn't hear the question. Are you willing to shed blood to get things back to the way they are? Well, I'm not sure what you mean by shed blood, but uh, I'm willing to do what I have to do to get things back to the way they are. Uh, what do you think is the biggest problem with our people? A lack of knowledge of self. A lack of knowledge of self. A lack of knowledge of self. Uh, on the Sphinx is written, man, know thyself. And uh, unfortunately, too many of us don't know who we are, where we came from, or where we're going. Who's your favorite pharaoh? Probably Ramses the second. Who's your hero? I have several. Now, one, I would say Miles Davis. Miles Davis. As a, as a personality. Uh, and two, I would say Prophet Noble Jurabi. What part of the journey did you enjoy the most? I was Very, very enjoyable. Uh, more the energy, more the spirit of this of this country, the spirit of, of, of the uh, monument, this energy that I was able to tap into. Uh, what is your religion? I am. Uh, when are you, when are you making the next journey back to Africa? Hopefully, it will be within the next year. All right, thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you. Brother. All right, my sister, introduce yourself to the people. I'm Yawa Tupra. I live in Fayetteville, North Carolina. All right, what you do in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina? I'm retired. I do volunteer work. I teach yoga at the Center for the Blind, and I'm a storyteller. How many journeys have you made to Africa? This is the third one. Where else have you been? I lived in Liberia for two years, and I lived in Ghana for three years. I was living in, how was our life in Ghana? Fabulous. I'm going to retire there. That's what I'm talking about. What made you finally come to, come here to Egypt? It was the right price, the right time, and with the right person. How do you feel about the Arabian and European domination of Egypt? I, I can't say it while I'm being recorded. Alright, what is the biggest thing that stood out? Just the magnificence of everything. What is your religion? Next. All right. What is the biggest problem with our people? I wish I had the solution, but I just wish we would respect each other more. Right. Who is your favorite pharaoh? Gosh, I don't, I mean, that's next. Uh, who's the hero? Next. All right. What part of the journey did you enjoy the most? I enjoyed all of it, and that's the truth. Oh, the cruise on the Nile. All the right. cruise on the Nile is definitely what I enjoyed the most. When are you making your next journey back to Africa? Hopefully in July. All right, uh, where are you going in July? Ghana. Right. Maybe I'll see you in Ghana one day. Uh, thank you, my sister. I would love to see you in Ghana. And please give me your info. All right, we'll, we'll do that on the aircraft. Okay, thank you.